So I want to welcome everyone to our region captain call. Um, I, I'm, I'm wearing uh, one of my new Convention of State shirts, short sleeve. I mean, you know, we're we're thinking spring up here, but spring isn't happening. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we had snow uh, uh, yesterday and some this morning, snow showers, but uh, it's awful cold up here. So we're we're trying to think positive and we're trying to uh, 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 think uh, spring uh, and I and I guess there are a lot of a lot of parts of the country experiencing the same thing. So uh, we got the recording started and uh, as we've been trying to do on our calls, um, if you're speaking, uh, turn your camera on while you're speaking so we can see you. Uh, I was hoping, Angie, you would have your uh, be able oh. to have your camera on tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, speaking of guests tonight, uh, we have uh, Rodney Huckleberry, our uh, past states uh, region director, is with us tonight, and also the co-past states region director. I hope I got that title correct. Uh, Angie Turner is with yep. us tonight. I get that right, Angie? Yes, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, Angie, uh, of course, um, helps Rodney with past states. But Angie was uh, previously a state director in Texas, and I understand you um, – have a lot of experience with region captains. Were you a region captain at one time, Angie? Yes, I was. I, I served as a district captain for a short time and regional captain for a couple of years before becoming state director. Okay, okay. Well, good. I, I'm hoping you can provide us uh, some input tonight uh, as uh, uh, to help us in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to develop at the region captain level in our state. So uh, bear with us a little while here while we lay the groundwork, and then uh, you're more than welcome to uh, chime in with uh, any suggestions or any any comments. So glad okay, to have sure. you tonight. Thank you for thank, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, we're going to talk about. Uh, our vision statement and mission statement. Then we're going to uh, go into uh, the format that we're trying to develop here in our state for future region captain calls, not only for the call, but also a format that the region captain can use to monitor progress within his or her region. Now, Angie, you have to be aware, uh, in Indiana, we have nine regions, and we only have, at this time, two region captains. And um, both of them are on the call tonight, Peter Youngsma and Gary Harbaugh. Uh, so we only have two region captains. Uh, so we're, we're in the process of building our region captain positions and ranks. And we'll get into that a little bit more later. But for right now, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, put together this format, and I refer to it as a format. Um, this is how I would like to see our future region captain calls evolve to. But it, it also I want it to be a, a, um, a process or a format that they can use to monitor the progress in their own uh, districts or their own region. Um, we're going to talk about recruitment, uh, legislative, I'll go into more details on this, grassroots and education. Those will be the four main areas of this format that we're trying to develop. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about developing a region team. Uh, got a couple updates to Citizen Builder that I want to make sure everyone's aware of. And uh, I also want to call your attention, if you haven't already seen it, our Facebook editor, John Ackerman, was interviewed on a local radio station here in uh, the state. Uh, I want to point that out to you. 
Then we'll get some updates on our um, district captain recruitment campaign and our training program. Uh, so uh, George Ward, our state uh, grassroots coordinator, and Rachel, our administrative and services director, will give us an update on their training. Uh, note, our next region captain call will be May 8th. Um, that's uh, uh, out a little further than we would normally go, but uh, I've got a conflict, and we've got a state call in between there, so... Next call will be May, May 8th. Okay, let's get started then. And, I'm oh, sorry about that, my, my uh, cell phone was on. Okay, um, first thing we always talk about is our vision statement here for Indiana. And that is to build a Hoosier grassroots community of citizens and legislators dedicated to the constitutional concept of self-governance. So that's our vision statement for the state of Indiana. Now our mission statement, and this is where we get into where we get into the nuts and bolts of the format that we're trying to develop. Our mission statement, we have four goals that we're working toward to achieve by the end of this year. Number one is to fill all the support positions, region captain positions, and 70% of our district captain positions. Uh, in Indiana, we have 100 districts, so that would be um, 70 district captains in place by the end of this year. Strengthen our legislator relationships. Grow our grassroots to 30,000 supporters and of course then conduct ongoing educational uh, programs, meetings <clears throat> to educate our um, public, our supporters uh, in, in our state. So what it comes down to then that we want our future meetings to focus on then basically is recruitment, legislative, grassroots, and education. Okay. When it comes to recruitment, <clears throat> we, um, this is a graph that we share in every state call monthly. Shows uh, the districts assigned in each region, each of the nine regions. And uh, what I've indicated here at the bottom is, uh, I, like I said, our goal is to attain 70% of our district captains in place. So what I've indicated here then for each region to attain 70%, each region will have to attain this many region captains, eight in region one, uh, four here in region five, 10 in region seven, okay? Now we have some region captains in place. So remaining, the number remaining to achieve the 70% goal in each region would be on this line. So region one, we need six more region captains. Here in region five, we need only two more. And here in region seven, we need eight more, okay? And of course we need, we wanna fill all the region captain positions. Uh, we have two, so we're still looking then to fill seven region captain positions. Okay. Anybody have any questions on, on this first one? Okay. Oh, um, you need to update that. Um, yes, that's a, this is as of March 28th. It oh, hasn't okay. been updated. Yes, we have some more district captains. I was thinking of the positive side that we actually have some, a couple that are missing. I didn't think of the other side of it. There are probably some people that are gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've... Uh, We've lost some, uh, but we've gained some. Yeah. So, okay. yes, this is not, not really current, up to date. Okay, the second, uh, the second part of our, our, the format that we want to develop is, has to do with our legislative program. We have a statewide legislative program. Uh, of course, being a past state, we're, a little, we're different in this respect. Um, 
and our state legislative liaison uh, is is uh, has put this together, and it's called the program is called 34 Ready. It's a <clears throat> very very good program, and <clears throat> we'll be we'll be getting everybody on board for this program. We are in the process of developing a tracking tool to to track our progress with regard to legislative meetings. Uh, something in addition other than the LMS. Okay, the third will be the uh, grassroots. This is an, another graph that we uh, um, present at our region at our uh, state call every month. Uh, this d uh, shows us by region. In the current month, the number of petition signers for that month, year to date, the number of petition signers, and the number then remaining for each region to achieve the 30,000 goal that we're trying to achieve per our mission goal. So, um, what I what I would foresee in our region captain call with respect to this particular item is tell us what you're doing in your region to achieve these numbers. So in Region 5, Region Captain, you tell, tell us on this call, tell us what you're doing to um, define uh, 1,109 more petition signers. So what, what, what activities are you involved in in your region to try and accomplish that. So that's the kind of thing that I was hope was am hoping that can be reported at on a region call. Same thing would hold true with these others that we just mentioned. For example, if we back up here to recruitment, tell us in our in our region captain call, tell us here in in uh, in a region five, you're looking for uh, you're only looking for two more district captains. What are you doing? What are you doing to try and find those additional district captains? So that's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. Well, and we'll jump now to the last one is education. Once again, we don't have a tracking tool necessarily for this, but again, I would want to hopefully at a region captain call hear what's happening in the regions to uh, with regard to education. Who are you talking to? What uh, uh, what programs do you have in place? Are you doing meetings? Are you doing uh, uh, living room meetings, uh, town hall meetings? What are you doing? Tell us what you're doing to achieve this goal of education. So that's kind of the format, and and I'm going to uh, stop there briefly. Uh, and ask uh, Rodney, Angie, anybody got any any comments or suggestions on what we've talked about so far here? Uh, well, it looks really good on what you got there. I, uh, of course, there's always the act learning to adjust along the way uh, with goals and things like that. Um, and only thing I can think of right off the top of my head here is maybe trying to come up even for everybody else on this call and on the state call is just come up with ideas on how to accomplish some of those goals so you can kind of share a broad knowledge of how to accomplish each of the goals in each of those categories so it's not left up to the region captain to uh, Try to figure all that out, or whatever. Right. I, I would I would foresee that the region captain call would be another opportunity. I would say that for region captains to talk about ideas that they're working on, things that they're working on, to share those uh, those thoughts and and ideas with other region captains. Yeah. And is this how do did this, is this uh, in line with what your experience is? Yeah, um, I think it, it sounds great. Um, 
you know, back to what kind of what Rodney was saying. Well, let me back up a little bit. Our um, structure in Texas is a little bit different. We had 150 house districts and 13 regions, so just a, a little bit larger model. Right. Um, and basically the, the regions were divided up anywhere from 8 to 12 house districts per region, and that really is kind of based on population. <clears throat> um, and then the RCs were really kind of a second tier or middle um, tier uh, between the state directors and the district captains to help state directors coordinate and manage. And so RCs really play a you know pretty vital role um, in the state team. And we would definitely uh, we had for a time we had weekly regional uh, captain calls that was led by the state director for training purposes for new RCs. Um, but, you know, then we could kind of back off a little bit and do those calls maybe twice a month. And one of those two calls might be a regional report um, where regional captains would just kind of let us know what was going on uh, in their region, um, any open districts that they had or any districts that they had filled with a DC and uh, any kind of events that, that were happening also in the region. Um, primarily, uh, you know, the RCs had a little bit of incentive to get district captains onboarded. Uh, we, we had them, they had access to the LMT. Um, and so if there was an open district, they, the RCs would have to cover that open district with uh, making sure that the follow-up tool was caught up um, primarily. And so that was a little bit of an incentive to make sure that they were able to find a DC to, to fill that, that open district. Right, um, right. And then some of the ideas that, you know, we would kind of throw out there would be uh, for building the grassroots would be, you know, a monthly meeting in the in the house district. DCs ought to be having probably a monthly meeting uh, with their uh, team, DC team members, definitely, and uh, also with the volunteers and supporters in their districts. Uh, so there's also presentations and booths and other events, you know, that they can they can have each month every other month, however they, they work that out. But that would be a tool that they could use to try and, you know, gain petition signers and volunteers, that kind of thing. Right, right. Okay. Uh, kind of yeah, okay. sounds like we're, we're, we're thinking along the same lines, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe going about it a little different way, but uh, probably very similar. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Gary, uh, I know... Um, Gary mentioned uh, to me on a phone call earlier this week that he he had some thoughts and ideas. We we've uh, talked about this already in a previous region captain call, uh, so we're we're kind of going over it again here. And since that call, though, Gary said you had some thoughts about this. Gary, you want to uh, express those now? Yeah, I'd be glad to, Dale. <clears throat> I guess one of the things I was thinking about for uh, region captains is I think it's important for us to try to build relationship with the district captains and be in touch with them on a regular basis uh, to develop that relationship so that we can really work together and help them uh, you know in a better way than just simply uh, knowing who they are we really need to know them and know what their needs are and be in touch with them what they're doing and how we can help them to be more successful in uh, in their work. Okay. Yep. Good. Good point. Good point. Dale, I, I did forget one item as well. The RCs would also have a uh, monthly or bi-monthly call with the district captains, and that was a good way for them. It was just a free conference call. Um, with all of the DCs in their region so that they can kind of strategize and get reports and maybe do some training and, you know, whatever topic they wanted to cover. And uh, so I think it's important for 
the you know state director to have a call with the regional captains as well. The regional captains have a call with the district captains. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that. That uh, kind of and, and Gary's comment too ties into this, <clears throat> which kind of ties into my my next uh, uh, topic that I wanted to get into on the agenda. Dale, before and, you move to the next topic, Dale, can I just say something? Um, in sure, response sure. To the comment? Okay. Well, first of all, I agree with you that what Angie, all the stuff that Angie <clears throat> described is what we've talked about in the past and what we'll be implementing. I think it's actually pretty much the same, our vision for region captains. But going back to Rodney's question, um, just because I don't know that you, I, I know that, that this is something he might not realize. Um, and Angie doesn't know this. We just recently implemented um, a new program, training program for our district captains, only in the last month and uh, less than two months. So we've only just begun with like a comprehensive overhaul of looking at the district captain responsibility. What is the goal for district captains, and how do we give them the tools to get to that goal? And I think, based on my conversations with Dale, that that's something we're thinking about doing as a group, including you know our current region captains four region captains coming in, that the idea is that we give them comprehensive tools and training and support to an input from our current region captains and any potential region captains to talk about the things Rodney asked about, about, you know, what are we actually, how do they actually uh, uh, achieve those four areas, success in those four areas. And um, also, it will absolutely be including what Angie just talked about, the fact that you know, um, and what Gary brought up actually is one of the things Dale and, and I have been talking about for like a, six months, that, you know, the region captain's responsibilities as far as being supports for their district captains um, and kind of also being that sort of in-between level between the district captains and the state director. So I just wanted to echo that I agree with everything everybody said and that we have been, that is in line with what we're planning on putting into place on a training right. level and on a support level. So, right, okay. right. Um, well, and... Then I want to share also um, with you my, my personal experience. Um, I wasn't a district captain for very long, um, and one of the things a district captain is supposed to be doing is, is presentations, uh, you know, public presentations, and also um, for any volunteers that may want to step up to the district captain team. Um, and previously under Nation Builder, we were calling them grassroots coordinators, you know, at the district level. But uh, so what I had been, ha my particular house district is a, a rural area and it included eight counties. And so I picked the three major, four major cities and did a presentation once a month. So like on the first Monday down in Brownwood or the second Tuesday over in Granbury, so forth. And, um, and it was at a public library or um, a community center, something like that, usually, you know, free of charge and uh, would reserve that ahead of time. Well, I carried that model over as an RC, and at the time we had some RCs that were in place that were inactive, and so the idea was just to go and meet with them and let them see a couple of presentations uh, over a couple of months and then go out again and let them do the presentation and, uh, you know, kind of give them a little bit of feedback and, and that kind of thing and, and kind of help them get started as well as any kind of, you know, technical tool training that they might need if, if they weren't up to speed on that. And so that was just a really fabulous idea, fantastic idea. Um, and we were, you know, successful um, in Texas doing that. So I don't know how big of an area um, you all have, you know, as regional captains, mine was actually two Senate districts in a pretty big geographical area, but then, you know, I didn't, I don't have a full-time job, so I was able to travel. Not everybody is able to do that, but that's right. another idea that you might, might think about. Well, and, and we have used, uh, <clears throat> the town hall meeting, uh, concept, uh, Quite yep. honestly, with limited success. Uh, yeah. So we're, uh, while that's still a, a, a good idea. Um, yeah. You, 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 but my experience is you, you really need help. You really need to work it to get yeah. people to continue coming. But we're, we're going to, we want to encourage uh, other means, uh, uh, you know, maybe, you're, you're the region captain or the district captain's uh, 
maybe they can get access to other types of meetings that go on in their area where they could, you know, make a presentation at, at another type of meeting instead of having to organize one themselves. Uh, or, Absolutely. Or, yes, know, what, that, yes, that always works out a lot better. <laughs> um, one of our region captains on this call tonight, Peter, uh, he's done a webinar, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, did a fantastic job on it. Um, it was just difficult to get the word out and promote it. It was just uh, 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 the attendance yep. on it was very, very low, but he did a, a super job. Uh, Gary, has uh, the other, our other region captain, has done uh, town hall meetings and made good presentations. So we're trying to do everything we can, Yeah. whatever means works best. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's kind of where some coalition building comes into play, too. Right. Um, definitely you get a bigger crowd if you have an invitation from a Republican uh, women's uh, meeting or um, Lions Club or Optimist Club or Men's Breakfast Club or something like that, where the crowd is already going to be there, and uh, they meet already regularly, in it. and uh, so just right. going and doing a presentation there works out a lot better. You've got a bigger crowd. That's very good. That's right. That's right. Well, the, the other topic, the next topic that I wanted to get into, and we're kind of talking about it really, is that we want our region captains to develop a region team. And, uh, you know, much like uh, the team that, that, that I'm developing at the state level uh, with uh, the grassroots coordinator with uh, – Rachel as the administrative services uh, director. We want to encourage the region, region captains to develop a team uh, at the region level that can help the region captain in implementing a lot of these programs or tracking them. And those can be volunteers, uh, can be other district captains in, in your region. So it's very, very important to develop that team. and. And it goes down to the district captain also should uh, be encouraged to develop a team of volunteers within uh, each district. So uh, I'm just seeing that this team concept uh, is, is playing a, a much more important role as time goes on in what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. anybody got anybody else? Any, anything else? anybody want to say? Okay. Well, I'm right. a big believer in the team concept. That's why I brought Angie on, and as Rachel knows, is trying to develop another team, but I'm going to do it a different way. But uh, we have to close the door here for the dog barking. Yeah, hang on a second. Uh, I, I thought that was your dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I recognize the bark. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got a neighbor with a new dog, and it's kind of creating havoc around here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, one thing before you go on to that next subject is I think I talked to Dale about it, and I think he knew already, and Angie knows is uh, part of that team concept. The region captains, you just talk about recruiting region captains, and kind of the belief is uh, to raise up district captains to region captains because they worked in that district captain position and knows what it is. Now, that's not to say you might find somebody that's a good leader to do that and they hadn't been a district captain, but you got the state support team there to, to kind of mentor them along and help them out. Uh, same thing with district captains. If you've got that team you got somebody that has to take time off. Uh, I want to go fishing, for example. I need somebody that can uh, do the things I do while I'm gone. But yeah, team concept is is really important uh, all the way around succession planning as well. Right. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. The, I think the whole idea of the teams is going to be so much better. Um, one, no one wants to feel like they're all alone as a district captain doing all of the work in their house districts. And so having those teams really is, I think, going to alleviate a lot of that and 
make it a lot more enjoyable and spread out the workload. Yep, yep. All right. A um, couple new things that have come about in Citizen Builder that uh, hopefully you've already seen, but you, if you haven't, I want to call them to your attention. Um, the first thing is called the uh, a new option called uh, Citizen Builder Activities. So if you go on uh, the website and you go to the click on the dashboard option, you'll you'll see these uh, national graphs here, uh, just like you see on the screen now. Well, right up here, you'll see a new uh, option called CB Activity, and if you click on that. Uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see some uh, some data for our state, and you're going to see here. Now this is new, so so we're all uh, uh, kind of in a uh, learning curve here as to how we're going to use this information and what to do with it. But this gives us here a breakdown of uh, our, our total volunteers and a breakdown of. Uh, according to what's listed here to the right. So volunteers that have never logged into Citizen Builder, uh, inactive volunteers, blah, 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 all the way down. So you've got the graph here, but then you can then, let's, let's look at the blue one here, volunteers that have never logged in. If I click on it, up comes a list of the people that comprise that particular graph. Now, Rodney and, and, and Angie, please uh, uh, chime in here if I'm forgetting anything or if I'm not explaining it fully. But um, this is, uh, like I said, this is information that we're just we're just now seeing and kind of trying to learn how we're going to use it. Um, for example, these are volunteers that have never logged in. Well, I, I've, I've already pointed this out to Rodney. These social media warriors, we've never, according to my, according to my knowledge, have, have always been told that they are not to have access to Citizen Builder. So you heard anything more on that, Rodney? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll hit on that one first because it's real brief, but I pointed that out today on the region director call that the social media, media warrior, the volunteer, and the QRT team member doesn't really have a need right now to log into Citizen Builders. They don't need access to the database. The only thing is you can encourage them to log in to see if you're have posting content related to a specific district or region or something like that. But most states aren't, aren't to that exactly yet. On the status there about the login, it was quickly pointed out that uh, there are some real active people that will stay logged in for a long time, and we, that was brought up on the region director call today. And one of the people happened to look up Jenny, and then they looked up me. I haven't logged into uh, Citizen Builder since February 10th or 25th. And the reason I have... <laughs> yeah. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, well, you, you, just, you just have enough time to sleep, and then you're right back on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and that's what it was. I've been logged in since then, so... Uh, what they're going to do now, and Michael Tranchina mentioned this a couple of days ago on a webinar, what's going to happen is it's they're going to base it off of some action in Citizen Builder as far as the activity, which it will also point that people that haven't logged in, there's going to be no activity there. So what you're talking about, the status is still going to be there because if there's no activity, you know they're not logging in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and uh, and of course, then then you can you can go to each of the uh, each of the uh, uh, rings on that graph. Here's the inactive ones for uh, uh, 90 days, and you can see that uh, the list comes up. And 
so forth and so on. So I'm just saying, again, this is this is new information to us. So we're we're still in the learning curve as to how to utilize this. Now the other thing that I want to point out to you is if you scroll, or if you go over to the uh, toolbar on the sidebar here, you'll see a new category called messages. And if you click on that, uh, you're going to see some options. And this is this is again new. We're still learning how to use this. And Rodney and Angie, I hope you can. Uh, provide some more input on this but if I click click on my inbox here I don't have any messages so uh, yeah. is this is this going to take the place of slack uh, I don't see it doing that not for a long time anyway because uh, you've got like your social media warriors, the other ones, you've got people on Slack that may not be in here. That's it's, true. That's true. But you definitely could and probably should move in that direction for important messaging and things like that, strategy and things like your uh, uh, your conference call notifications, but you're kind of going to have to duplicate that. It's going to be a mindset change for people to be coming here to look for messages versus where they have before. It's going to take some while, I think. Okay. Now, I, I would assume, though, that this is ultimately, not now, but ultimately will probably house the blast email capability or blast mes messaging capability? Yes. It, uh, I don't think it... it don't quote me on this. It may not still go down to like the supporter volunteer, not the LMT volunteer, but the people in the district level as far as email blasts. It might. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But for right now, it would be a blast out to your whole state leadership and DCs and everybody would be able to do that. Okay. So is everybody just kind of in a learning mode on this right now? Yeah, I haven't seen anybody use it yet. Uh, I've thought about it. I sent one message, <laughs> and now and now I can't remember how to send a message again. But uh, uh, haven't received any messages yet. But okay. Well, anyway, uh, two new two new features uh, to Citizen Builder. Does anybody anybody have any questions or comments about those new features? Okay. So if, you, if anybody doesn't know how to use them and you want to start using them, they're, uh, I think I, I posted them on most states. Jerry may have done it too. On your state Slack, there's a video out there that covers right. that pretty much in detail. Right, right. Correct. Thanks. Okay, the next item on the agenda is I wanted to just point out to you, if you haven't seen this as yet, it's on uh, the uh our, our, our Indiana Slack team and under the general, in the general channel, and it's um, a video of uh, John Ackerman, our Facebook editor, a video of his radio interview, radio station interview from last uh, Saturday morning, I believe it was. And uh, if you haven't seen that, I would encourage you to go. Take a look at it. John did a great job. Just did a great job. Um, he uh, he was right in the studio with with the uh, the announcer, and uh, 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 he he just uh, he answered all the questions very well, very thoughtful, and just did a great job. We need to be doing this all over the state, and. Uh, I've already talked to our state communications coordinator, and we're working on this. But uh, we need to have uh, leaders from across the state, could be district captains, region captains, uh, good, solid volunteers, um, doing 
wherever possible, doing radio interviews of this nature, uh, it's a great way to get the message out about Convention of States. So uh, once again, uh, John did a great job, and uh, uh, I hope we can and, and want, I hope and want to be doing more of this uh, wherever possible across the state. There's got to be a ton of opportunities to do this type of thing uh, across our state. Angie, have you ever done a radio interview of this nature? I have. I've done one radio interview. I don't know um, how that compares to what you're talking about, but yes, I've done one. And yeah. it was my first one. It was a little bit nerve wracking, but yeah, you know. I agree. <laughs> I've done a I've done a couple here in in our area uh, with a, a local radio station that's very very popular, and uh, yeah, it was it was a little nerve wracking certainly the first time through. <laughs> the first time, yep. Yeah, but uh, it seemed to go very well. So I, I hope we can do more of these. Hope we can do more. Okay, let's get on into some updates here. Uh, Rachel, are you still on? I, I see your message that you have uh, something going at 10 o'clock. Are you still on, Rachel? Yeah, okay, sorry. I have to go, I have to go um, pet sitting, so I can still be on the call, but I'll be on my phone, so you won't be able to see me, and I won't be able to look at anything on, the, on my computer. So. Okay. So you'll be calling back in then? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can call for calling back in around 10, so I might be gone for like a minute or two in the interim. Okay, okay. okay. Um, you you want to do your thing now? Help if I can do that first so that I can look at my computer while I'm doing it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and give us an update then on the training program. Okay, great. Uh, okay, let me get the camera on. Okay, so um, the training program is finally moving, I think. Uh, we have um, a bunch of people, probably about five or six people who will be finishing their fifth and final module next week, um, pending me finishing up the content of that module, which is, <laughs> um, it's okay. always kind of like hurry up and wait, right? Uh, so anyway, so we're, we've done quite a bit of culling of people. We, I think that the consensus is between me and Dale that basically, you know, this was kind of like an early test for people to see um, if they were committed. Um, we had several people who were very gung-ho to, to sign on and to become district captains. And then once they were actually specifically asked to make a schedule, a time to do a face-to-face -face training, because all our training is done face-to-face, one-on-one, at least in the beginning, um, they disappeared. Yeah. So it's kind of disheartening. But at the same time, you know, we feel that if, 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 if right at the beginning you're not willing to commit one hour of time to schedule a training um, that most likely, you know, that person is not on board fully or enough to actually complete uh, district captain responsibilities. Um, I, I think we've had great feedback so far. Um, and um, the goal is, uh, there's a couple of goals. The first goal is for me to eventually be able to create a deliverable that I can give to other people. And the thinking is it'll be region captains. So that somewhere down the line, the region captains would be taking on this training responsibility um, because it's an enormous job, it's an enormous time suck. Rodney knows this. I've been unable to do anything else for the last two months because I'm, you know, I have 40 so people to train, and I do three face-to-face, one-on-one modules with each of them. And fortunately, George and our legislative liaison Paul have been willing to take on some of it. Otherwise, I would have had to do all by myself. Um, but it's been a great. It's totally worth it, and it's been a great. We have some amazing people coming in, and I'm hoping that we see a real difference in, in. Um, performance um, and connectivity and sort of buy-in from our district captains because they're really going to come in with a great, great first impression of us because they are getting to see how committed all of us in the support team are to them and that we're all here for the purpose of supporting them as district captains. And that's a message we keep getting across. And instead of just saying it, we're actually showing it by each of our support staff actually sitting down with them and making sure that they get all their questions and concerns answered. Um, on a little bit of a side note, but relevant, because it kind of goes to what Rodney brought up, we have actually had a couple of people in our district captain training, both very good um, uh, people, have already expressed interest in becoming region captains. Um, and what we're struggling with, and I don't know if you can help with this, Angie, you know, I think the biggest struggle we're having now is kind of, 
it's a little bit of a of a, sur a vicious cycle because you know we have a lot of re a district captain openings, but we also have a lot of region captain openings. And part of the burden of getting more district captains, as George will talk about in the recruitment section, is that we don't have enough region captains to work their regions to get district captains. But then the other side of that is we can't get region captains until we have district captains that we know can do the <laughs> district captain job before we make them region captains. So what Dale and I have come up with, which I think, and I'm curious what Rodney and Angie think about this, is sort of like a middle ground, which I think might work with, we're thinking about potentially, again, this is still in the development phase, but um, we're thinking that maybe some of our new trainees, people, so these people are not just new district captains. Yes, they haven't actually done the district captain job yet, but they're certainly trained a thousand times better than all of us who first came in, you know, a year or two ago were when we got nothing. Um, that we were thinking of maybe, and this goes back to what Dale was talking about, about the region captain team, of assigning them as something, we don't know, maybe it'll be region captain team or something like that, where they would still be potentially, you know, for the most part, still be acting in their role as district captain, but they would be taking on some sort of modified region captain responsibilities, primarily focusing on recruiting new district captains within their district with the understanding that once they get more experience as a district captain and or get more district captains in, they could then take on, if they want to and if we feel they're ready, the full region captain responsibility. And the reason I make that distinction is because, you know, we think of the region captain responsibility as two pieces. There's the supervisory responsibility. There's the piece of, you know, which, Angie mentioned, there's the piece of the skill set of supervising people, tracking, training, things like that. And these people would have to have that skill set to even be considered, obviously, as a region captain. But then there's a second piece, which is any open district captains, they basically are expected to fill in as district captains. And I think what the conclusion, Dale, tell me if I'm wrong, that we came to is that we feel pretty confident that we can recognize and cultivate someone who has that first skill set and who might be able to you know, do that, some of that overseeing and recruiting part, but that we wouldn't necessarily want to or feel comfortable asking somebody to fill in as a district captain in seven, six, seven districts when they haven't yet done that in their own district. So the way that that would kind of play out, I think we were sort of trying to, again, this is in its beginning stages, we were imagining maybe that, you know, the piece that they would really not be responsible for is they wouldn't necessarily be responsible for growing the grassroots in their other districts they wouldn't be responsible for certainly, I think it would be too much to ask them to be filling in and meeting with, you know, 10 legislators in districts they don't even live in, um, so that we might kind of put them on as provisional or region captain team so that we get that, we kind of solve that vicious cycle, I guess. That, that it would be an interim solution where we could have somebody serving in, in the role of helping with recruiting with the eye towards eventually becoming a region captain. I hope that wasn't convoluted, um, and I got my point across. Oh, that makes I'm sense. No, no, it was perfect. I love it. I think you're right on the mark. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, that little that transition is definitely what they need, and just everything that you laid out. That's awesome. You guys are <laughs> you're on top of it. Oh, that's so good to know. I really appreciate it because we you know, a lot of this stuff. I'm sure you know. It's sort of, you know, none of us are expert, at least in Indiana. None of us have done this before. We're not experts. We're just sort of, you know, thinking maybe this will work. Maybe if I throw this at it, we can, you know, we can get something in place. But we definitely have learned, I think, in, in our state that that it, it pays to do the work up front. You know, it can be very frustrating to not go full steam ahead all the time and, like, let's fill positions, let's fill positions. I think we've learned our lesson that by if the primary goal is filling positions, you're not necessarily doing the work up front to get the best and to retain people. So yes. I think we're kind of slowing down a little bit. This is why we're doing the training program, and we're hoping with region captains too, with the idea that, yes, for several more months it's going to be really tough, but it'll all pay off once we have a system and structure in place. Yep, yep. You guys are doing great. Fantastic. I feel for you because, you know, in Texas we we had the same kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of, of uh, people kicking up their feet and, uh, stepping back a little bit from the roles, and uh, so we had, you know, quite a few RC positions to fill. A lot of people, when they signed up for some reason, signed up primarily to get the resolution passed, and unfortunately, yeah, so I understand exactly what you guys are going through. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I, think it's a, I think it's a good uh, transition uh, plan, the best we can come up with, uh, right now, um, 
Plus, it, it's gonna, it's going to this person that these people that are expressing the desire to become region captains. You know, we put them in that transition position, and you know, they may decide, well, I'm not sure I want to do this. You know. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to filter. Definitely. Yeah, it's another filter, although we uh, certainly need region captains, but. Uh, we have found, well, as, as Rachel mentioned, we have found in this training program, uh, you know, we, 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 we've, we've had a lot of people say that I want to be a, a district captain. Well, they get into the training program, and all of a sudden they decide, well, maybe maybe this isn't what I want to do right now after all. So yeah, better yeah. we find that out now than six, eight months down the road. Yeah, yeah. exactly. One point on that, since we're a virtual organization, even at the state level, the the way I've found leaders and even state directors in some states is their activity on the conference calls, things like that. And so if the region captains, I know you only got two right now, but uh, if they have a conference call with like their DCs and volunteers in their region and you've got identify people on there that are active they speak up they sound kind of like engaged and would be a leader it's a good way to identify people just just one suggestion there's many ways to do it i guess but uh I, and on the roles if they're one to be a region captain and they're currently a district captain we did this in missouri i think most states the region captain is still the district captain of their district but it depends on what responsibilities you have for them they may not be able to do it all but they take on they, they even take on many districts until they fill them and filling them is like i talked about a while ago through conference calls or being able to reach out to them personally or whatever but on those roles like a district captain, if you got specific responsibilities for them, I don't want to divert from your plans there, but uh, if you got somebody that's a good leader in a district or even a region and they can find somebody that does the presentations, can do the presentations and things like that in the district to make them part of the team member, it's not, in my mind, necessary for that district captain or region captain to do those specific jobs, if they can find somebody responsible to do those other tasks. Right, right. right. Yep. Okay. Yep, good ideas, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, George, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. How are we coming on the uh, district captain, the recruitment uh, plan? Two, right? Two. Okay. Um, uh, I rejected one old hanger honor in the LMT for district captain uh, for district 54. Okay. There it is. Um, no problem. Um, so he's he's off the list. Uh, I've updated the sheet, our online sheet and stuff, so you can see a lot more uh, districts have been completed. Um, I've assigned Terry uh, region, I'm sorry, districts 91 and 100, and they're making the calls uh, for those post March 1st. Uh, okay. Terry, Terry got a hold of me today, and 91 is done, and he's uh, starting to work in 100. Um, he had, well, he said he didn't get any interested personnel out of 91 at all. Right. Um, Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Gary's working. Oh, Gary's working 58 and 60. Uh, and also, uh, I clarified that uh, they are making uh, calling all of the volunteers in the districts, not just the uh, recent ones. So uh, they're they're calling the recent ones first, and uh, after that, uh, then they're going through and finishing up a few volunteers. Uh, Terry, he talked to some people who have uh, been in there for two years, you know, from the old nation builder. And uh, <laughs> well, I would have done something then, but I, I don't have any time now. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. kind of good that we're getting this cleaned up and taken care of. Um, as far as my end of the training, uh, I've got six people in module four. Uh, two of them have uh, 
passed through and are now ready for module five. I got uh, two tomorrow and then one on Thursday. And uh, no, I'm sorry, two Thursday. Dang it. Two Wednesday and two Thursday. And uh, that'll be the sixth passing through module four. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, George. Yeah. Good. Uh, we, we're, we're developing, uh, uh, still, we're developing a, a tracking program for uh, tracking these uh, new recruits, and uh, maybe maybe the next call we'll have it uh, finalized where we can uh, share that with everyone. Uh, but, um, okay. Well, everyone, if anyone have any, that's all I had for you tonight. Has anyone got any comments or uh, any uh questions yet now's the time okay uh, well I want to thank you uh, Angie and and, and uh, Rodney thank you for uh, uh, participating tonight uh, we've really enjoyed your uh, your input and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you'll come back again and uh, and continue to help us out so, sure, uh, definitely. <laughs> Thank uh, you for having us, and you guys are doing great. You're doing a fa fantastic job. Well, thank you. I think we're, I think we're, we've, we're developing a great team here in Indiana. Um, you know, you're, you, you're coming out of a past state. Uh, we're a past state. You know that, that uh, lull that happens after a state passes. Uh, yeah. You know, it, yep. it hit us really hard, hit us really hard, and so we're we're in a rebuilding mode and have been for the past year. And but I think I think we, we're we're putting together a very good team and I think we're gonna come out of this in being even stronger than we were before. Yeah. But it's gonna it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some yep. time. I agree, Dale. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh all right, everyone, thanks for joining tonight. And, uh, again, our next call will be May 8th. So we'll see you then.